Hey, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. You gotta bring that shit back. It's good to have you with us. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Golden Baby channel. In this video, I wanted to share with you my findings on the late rapper China Rogers. Of course, I'm gonna tell you guys a bit of her backstory and her music, but while doing research about China, I found that aside from being a great artist, she also had a very interesting personality, and I wanted to share that as well. China was born China Marie Rogers in West Philadelphia in 1994. She can be described as an old soul, like someone who has been here before. She began writing books in middle school and started practicing Buddhism as early as the eighth grade because she agreed with the idealisms and the ways of life that came with that religion. That alone should tell you a lot about the person China was because someone in the eighth grade back in mid to late 2000s deciding to practice a religion on their own terms was not and still isn't very common. China was very slim and above average height, so people always told her that she should model. That thought came to life when she was discovered by a talent agent at a theme park, which led to her being signed to Ford Modeling Agency. However, modeling was never China's passion. She was just doing it because people told her she should, so she stopped modeling at 16. China still wrote books throughout high school, but she couldn't actually finish the books. She realized that she had a short attention span for writing books, so she started converting her writings into rap. At some point around this time, China met ASAP Yams, apparently through social media. Yams was the founder of ASAP Mob and co-owner of the ASAP Worldwide label. At first, before ever making music, China wanted to do A&R, which is like talent scouting and development. So she managed to create a business relationship with Yams by asking if she could shadow him while he was working. This turned into a solid mentorship and friendship. And once China actually started making music, Yams told her that she should pursue rapping rather than A&R. But still, China had other career ideas. She planned to go to college and join the military simultaneously because the military would pay for her college tuition and then she could become a pilot. However, China did not meet the weight requirements to train for the military, and since she could not afford college on her own, she gave up that entire plan and decided to go through with a music career. Not too long after she graduated high school in 2012, she recorded her first official song called Selfie in her friend's basement. Selfie was very well received, and then she followed up with Glenn Coco. China worked closely with ASAP Mob, even performing with them at some events, but in January of 2015, her mentor ASAP Yams passed away after an accidental drug overdose, even though some of those close to him claimed otherwise. Then at some point between 2015 and 2016, China began to struggle with her own opioid addiction, which she said was the result of suppressing her negative feelings. China was able to rehabilitate at a facility and graduated from the program. Three months later, she released her EP titled 90, which had some tracks of her speaking about her addiction and issues with drugs. Exactly a year after she completed rehab, her mother passed away in 2017. However, China didn't let that deter her from her sobriety streak. She knew her mother would not want her to use that as an excuse, so China got to work and released another EP in 2017 titled Music to Die To. Then in 2018, China's friend, also a known and loved artist, Mac Miller, passed away from overdosing. In December of 2019, almost four months before her passing, China released an EP titled In Case I Die First. Then on April 8, 2020, she was found after overdosing in her Philadelphia residence. Earlier, I spoke about China's personality and her being interesting. So I compiled a few clips to show because talking about it just wouldn't be enough in my honest opinion. Doing this, yada yada. But then I was like, the reason we were wearing those things wasn't because of our race. We just thought it was cool. I like that everyone thinks it's cool now. I just want people to give the credit where it's due. Like, I don't want to hear that these are boxer braids. Oh, yeah. These are cornrows. Yeah. These have been happening since, like, the beginning of time, like, mm -hmm. really intricate patterns and all that. I don't want to hear that these are Kim Kardashian braids. Like, right. that's the part that pisses me off about it. Not that people want to wear their hair like that, because it's a protective style, or that people, you know, like having, like, the thicker lip liner, or whatever, the big gold hoops with the name plate, all that. I don't mind that. It's just like, know where it came from and respect that. Don't act like it's, like, a new trend. I don't want to hear a Kardashian name. 
for everything that comes out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just bothersome. I think a lot of kids are obsessed with being depressed nowadays or they're like obsessed with being addicts or just like obsessed with something, some kind of character trait or flaw. Like we all want to be really messed up individuals and I don't know if it's because it's been glorified or, or glamorized maybe, like things like the 27 Club, What's stuff the like that. Club? Uh, all the famous people who died at 27, uh, like, like okay. heroin related overdoses right. and stuff. And it's just like, that's more what people are focused on now. And then the fashion kind of like resembles that. Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. like, I, I have, like, what do you mean obsessed with being depressed? That's like, I think the youth, these kids, mm -hmm. they are so into being like depressed, emo, like just like when emo was a thing, like it's just like, oh, I have issues, like, oh, I, I do a lot of drugs because I have problems, like, no, it's okay, you do a lot of drugs because you want to get high, like it doesn't always have to have extra, like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't have the time to try to get your respect. I'm going to get it just because I'm not bullshitting. So once they realize that you can hold your weight, they either A, get really intimidated and don't want to you, or they really want to work with you. So it's like the right people come. Stuck. I've always liked researching ancient cultures just because I really like history. That was always my best class. And it was particularly ancient history because I really like human ingenuity so I'm like how did you build these like how did you have indoor plumbing in ancient Rome like how was that even a thing when the rest of the world couldn't even get it right until like another like 600 years after or something like that because I am a girl so I'm going to talk about feminine things but my goal is to eliminate that female part out of female rapper because it takes away from me I feel like when you say someone's a really good female rapper it's like are you saying that only girls in my conversation are you saying I'm good for a girl like I don't like that so with that stuff like that I also wanted to ask about the fact that um, because of I think most female rappers have also been known for kind of using their, their sexual abilities oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. or kind of boasting about that whereas with you you actually make a point to say I'm not going to do that so it's, it's a refreshing thing to hear a woman not being like you know talking about how good she is in bed <laughs> you know as like mm -hmm. a, as if that's something that people want to hear so was that something that you were quite conscious of when you started writing that you didn't want to appeal just to men in that respect yeah that's just me being a private person I was always private in that way about relationships and things like that and I mean I love when ra when female rappers you know do that because it's what we're all thinking I just am not going to say it so like when Trina does it or you Nikki does it or Lil Kim did it it was just like shout out to you that's what I was thinking but I'm not going to rap like that but it's all good mm -hmm. it's like I just try to just stay away from that just for personal reasons like I was just always private yeah. You know what I mean? That you make music for angry people with too much pride to show how angry they are. Yeah. So it seems like it's important for you to inspire also other people. Or not? Yeah. At first, at first, no. At first, I thought, oh, I'm just doing this because I want to. I don't really care how people feel about me. Um, but now I know that. I think I have a pretty unique take on life or like I've been through certain things that everybody can't relate to and I know I am a voice for those people and uh, it does matter to me because I want people to know that you can come from anywhere, any walk of life and look like me or look like whatever and have gone through the same nonsense, like the same bullshit. So now it does matter for me to be some kind of like inspo. But that took growing and, and you know, yeah, maturing to, to realize. What happened? What, where, how did this happen? I think we didn't get here. I think we've been here and that people thought because, you know, they, they passed a few laws on the books that racism just disappeared. It's like, nah, they signed these things because they were being forced to like, but if it was up to the government at the time, I don't think it, they would have signed anything. There was just so much pressure like, okay, fine. We got to give them a couple rights because now like we're kind of tripping. But if no one would have pressured them, I don't think it would have changed. I don't think anyone's opinions ever changed. So maybe my fascination with her thoughts and opinions and her overall vibe is just personal, but I thought there was just something sincere and confident, but still very chill about the way that she voiced her opinions. And she seemed to be very wise for her age, especially writing books and deciding to start practicing certain religions in middle school. China would have been 26 this August, and it's just a sad situation. Another female rapper gone from this earth due to an accidental overdose. 
Studios. If you are a fan of China, feel free to discuss her music and some of your favorite songs below. Now that's all I have for this video. I'll catch y'all in the next one.